Welcome. I'm Dr. Andrew Wilner, author of The Locum Life, a physician's guide to locum tenens. And this is our continuing series about locums. And today I have the opportunity to speak with Nicole Pasquette. Nicole is a staffing agent for Comp Health, one of the largest and the oldest staffing agencies for locum tenants. I thought it was really important to hear about the agent's point of view. I've written about locum tenens and interviewed a lot of physicians about it, but I thought it would be really valuable to have a staffing agent's point of view. So welcome, Nicole. So say I'm a physician and uh, we've talked and I want an assignment. Yeah. Uh, what can I do to make sure I get, I'm sure if some assignments are better than others. Yeah. How, do, how do I get a good one? What do I need to do to get a good assignment? Yeah. So I think um, personally, the first thing you need to do is figure out what is good to you and what makes a good assignment to you. Like what is your goal and what's most important to you is it location is it the amount of time is it the pay you know uh i guess a combination of all three and communicate that with your recruiter because once we know what your goals are and what's most important to you we can help build a plan based off of that so um in my opinion so if it's let's just say it's location um that's you want a, a better location as far as, uh, you know, I'll have people that call me and they want, you know, New York City or Hawaii or Southern California, some of those more heavily saturated areas. What's important would be um, to move quickly then, to be responsive. If you see a job that's in a location that is important to you, uh, um, move quickly because those go fast, just like in the permanent sector. And um, there will be more candidates applying for that position and it'll, it'll, locums is a fast moving business, uh, as you, you know, and then if it's pay, um, communicate that with your, um, representative like myself, you know, I'll have physicians that, well, let me know, this is what I need to be making to ensure it's worth my time to close my practice for a week or for me to, to leave my permanent contract, I need to be making X amount for the year. You know, pay is the most important factor to me because I'm trying to, to pay off my medical school loans or whatever it might be. Um, and then we specialize in negotiating, uh, you know, the best pay that we can for you um, and ensuring your CV is up to date. All of your qualifications are on there. You're up to date on your CME and different factors that can set you apart from other candidates. Now you've been doing this for uh, more than a dozen years. Yeah. What well, What's the the marketplace like now? So I'm a neurologist. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of doing locums. Are there? Is it hard for me to find a position? Are there a lot of positions? How does what is yeah. the market now? The markets, gosh, it's growing. It's crazy to uh, to see how much it's grown. And I mean, even the last five years, but especially since I started, you know, over ten years ago. And um, your specialty is a very high in demand specialty, uh, neurology, and it um, for locums it mirrors, or I found in my opinion, it mirrors the permanent. Uh, job market. So specialties that are in high demand, you know, hospital-based specialties right now, um, hospitalists, uh, internal medicine, neurology, even psych, cardiology, you know, all of those are in high demand. Um, I can competently say that I can, for my specialty, where I'm, where I'm the, uh, you know, I guess, my focus being neurology, I can confidently say if I have a neurologist coming to me that has some flexibility, uh, we can keep you as busy as you want. If you go on our website on comphealth.com right now, I think there's over 5,500 uh, jobs for all of our specialties right now for locum. So if that gives you an idea, um, we're the largest locums uh, agency and then Weather Comp Health and Weatherby, our sister company, right behind us so i i can confidently say chg you know continues to lead the the market and we can keep you as busy as you want to be <laughs> well that's fantastic yeah you know there's 
there are some thorny details about yes. working locums. Yes. And I want to talk about those. One is licensing. So yes. obviously, if I'm a physician and I want to work in South Dakota, I've yeah. got to get a South Dakota license. You do. And if I yep. want to work in Minnesota, I have to have a Minnesota license. Do, and the more licenses I have, the more job opportunities I'm going to have. But uh, the licenses, uh, you have to keep up the CME. And of course, you have to pay for the licenses. How does uh, Comp Health help out in that respect? And, and before you answer that, how many licenses should I get? <laughs> well, it varies. Um, licensing, yes, that can be uh, paperwork. I don't think that's any physician's favorite thing to do, right? I don't think that's why most of you guys got into medicine. Um, so yeah, I know that could be the thorn in your side um, and a, a benefit to working with my licensing team. Um, so as far as how many licenses, it, it varies. So it depends. Um, where do you want to practice? Are you totally flexible and open to going to multiple locations? You might need, but you may only need two licenses or, or one for that matter. I have some physicians that work full-time locums that only hold one state license. Some that hold 10, some that do, you know, telemedicine, for example, that hold mm. over 20. So it really just varies. Um, person to person. And that's why it's really important to communicate to your um, agency that you're working with what's important to you as far as location and your goals so that we can best guide you in uh, a plan. The great thing that exists now is the Interstate Medical li uh, Compact License. So I think they have 26. That sounds uh, about right. 26 uh, states that participate, and it's a pathway um, to licensure. Um, the fees are still there, but again, as an agency, we cover, you know, for the most part, we would cover those fees as it's tied to locums work. Um, and But the paperwork, it, once you're enrolled in that, um, if you qualify, there are some qualifications that need to be met for the Interstate Medical License Compact, but once you qualify, that expedites the licensing process significantly. And um, if you don't qualify for it, um, uh, based on different factors or um, that are on their website and ours, um, we can suggest certain states where we get most locums work. I have data that I can pull, let's say, for my specialty specifically saying, oh, okay, you know, Washington would be a good state for you. If you're totally open to location and you just want to be doing strictly neurohospitalist work, this is where we get the most neurohospitalist work, up here in Washington State or Pennsylvania or wherever that might be. And, um, or there are certain states that are just easier to obtain. They have either locum tenens licenses or an easier process. Um, so it, it all just depends on what your goals are. And I remember when I got my uh, Nevada license, mm -hmm. the uh, agent there was very proud that Nevada was one of the most difficult licenses in the country <laughs> to get, that they had more obstacles, uh, fingerprinting yeah. and documentation than anybody else. And so uh, she congratulated me that I actually <laughs> managed to get all of the required documents to Nevada. And of course, Nevada is one of the states that has one of the biggest physician shortages in the country. Yeah. So, so I wonder if those two things are associated. Can you tell me off the top of your head, if I had to pick mm -hmm. one state as a neurologist to get a license where the most most work is, where they really yeah. need neurology? Do, do you happen to, uh, can you give me Yeah, a I would say, um, I mentioned Washington, Washington State as a neurohospitalist, and Pennsylvania. Those are the two, and, and being strategic about things, especially where Pennsylvania right now takes anywhere between 14 to 16 weeks to obtain, that might be something that you would work with um, your rep to proactively license you for in Pennsylvania, where Washington only is taking about five weeks, so you might have time while your hospital privileges are in process to obtain that. Um, but those are a couple offhand. Um, Ohio is another state that I see a lot. Um, of let me, all right, let me switch yeah. to the 
the other problematic area for physicians, sure. malpractice. Yeah, malpractice. Okay. So I have my job, but I want to work locums part time. And of course, I have malpractice insurance through my regular yeah. job. And now I want to go work locums. So do I need additional malpractice? And if so, where do I get it? Yeah, so you would need to obtain malpractice insurance through Comp Health um, if you're working with my agency. Um, and most uh, reputable agencies, uh, especially if they're members of NALTO, would um, provide you malpractice insurance. And um, our limits are, are standard um, like any other carrier. Um, so um, you aren't, generally speaking, able to use your own malpractice insurance during a locums assignment and your malpractice insurance that you would have through Comp Health would be solely for your work through Comp Health. Um, after you're um, done with your locums assignment, let's just say you decide to work just a, a week um, of locums in between a, two permanent jobs, for example, you aren't, um, you don't need to worry about purchasing tail coverage, for example, because you're covered no matter when the claim occurs. So it's lifetime coverage. And um, if you already have malpractice, let's say a malpractice claim rather, um, you know, for going that route as well, um, that doesn't preclude you from working locums at all. Just like any permanent position that you're applying for, you would just need to communicate that up front, whether it's a pending case or previous payout, just communicate that with your rep just to ensure that they can um, communicate that with the facility that you're applying to and allow enough time for licensure or um, hospital privileges. Oh, that's great. In fact, that was my next question. <laughs> oh, so okay. Let me just summarize what you said, because yeah. I think it's really important. Yeah. You have to have additional malpractice for your locums, but if you work through an agency like Comp Health, they will provide it, and they will also provide that's the tail. Correct. And then correct. if you happen to have a malpractice claim against you, as more than half of physicians do if they're over yeah. 55 years old, it's a common thing that Correct. will not keep you from working uh, locum tenants, but you need to be upfront about it on your application, share that information with your uh, staffing agent. And it uh, should, you know, maybe if you have 10 claims, it might become a problem, but uh, one or two certainly uh, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be, is that right? That's correct. And even if you did have 10, it may not, it may not be, especially depending on your specialty and your work history, you know, there's different factors that our internal internal credentialing department will look at. It, it, it may not, again, bar you from working locums. It's just something that we have to make sure you have uh, listed up front. And then also make sure if you do have malpractice, whether it's pending or previous payouts, have your documentation gathered um, you know, whether it's court documents or whatever it might be, just ensure you have that because you will be asked to supply that for the licensing board or to Comp Health, um, since we will, you know, would be covering your malpractice insurance as well as uh, hospital privileging um, applications. As you know, they all ask about it. So it's just important to make sure you're organized and, and have a um, explanation available. Right. In my book, I talk about making a folder either on mm -hmm. a Dropbox or iCloud or somewhere yeah. with all of your diplomas and yep. the letters of recommendation and state licenses, because somehow these things are always being asked for. And it's, a, it's usually something that isn't that you don't use every day. So yeah. I, I have PDFs of all of these uh, documents so I can produce them uh, pretty uh, quickly. And I think that's something that locum tenens uh, physicians uh, probably would benefit uh, from doing. Now, yes. we've talked a lot about neurology. I guess I can't help that. I'm a neurologist. And, uh, <laughs> right. Can you, uh, do you have um, a kind of an overview of which other specialties are in big demand now for locum tenens? Yeah, I, you know, again, it, it mirrors, in my opinion, closely to um, what the uh, market looks like in high demand specialties for um, permanent staffing. Locums trends follow the same. So 
a lot of those same specialties that um, like neurology and, you know, cardiology and OB and family medicine, you know, or hospital-based specialties that, you know, you can find information about online. It's, it's mirrored, um, in my opinion, on the locums front. So pretty much uh, any specialty. I think I read somewhere that psychiatry is actually in yeah. big demand, which uh, surprised me somehow. You, I, you know, the traveling nurse is sort of an image in your brain, but the traveling uh -huh. psychiatrist somehow... <laughs> was it but that's not uh, as that's much. reality that's it reality. is it is i was reading uh, reading about that last week as well uh let's see uh what about other agencies so i've worked with comp health but yeah. i i went through your 5500 job opportunities and i don't see what i want if i'm working with you am i allowed to work with a different agency as well yeah yeah, so um, I, I find a lot of the physicians that I um, that might originally inquire about locums, if they're not referred to me, let's say from another physician, um, they might just be on the prowl looking at different um, job opportunities online. So it's not uncommon for them to be originally inquiring with multiple agencies um, online and um, not a problem at all, no conflict of interest generally. Um, most of the time I find once they have had an experience with a specific agency and it's gone well, they tend to gravitate to, you know, just primarily working with that agency um, for, uh, you know, their relationship that they have with their recruiter or agent um, and also just for ease of scheduling and, and other things like that. But yeah, it's, it's not a problem at all. Again, it just comes down to communication and making sure that you're communicating with each agency about other assignments that you've accepted so that they can um, help you ensure that there's not a conflict um, as far as scheduling goes, even you know just travel time and little things that we can take off of your plate. Um, and then um, it's generally not a problem at all. Well, Nicole, this has been really uh, fabulous uh, information. Uh, before we wrap up, I want to give you an opportunity to give, uh, do you have any advice you would give to a physician who's thinking yeah. about doing uh, locums? So um, take a look at this book <laughs> that Dr. <laughs> Wilner wrote. Um, it's super uh, educational. Um, I know you're not asking for any plug by me or anything, but truly I've, recommended it to several physicians who have just don't have the, um, you know, even the, the faintest idea of, you know, what is locums all about? So I think educate yourself. Um, there's lots of resources online. Um, Comp Health's website has a lot of resources about locums and, you know, just uh, CV writing tips and interviewing and, you know, what taxes look like and things like that. So I think, uh, educating yourself as much as possible to ensure it's something you want to do. And then um, speaking with a recruiter, someone um, like myself who is the expert in that, that field that can help answer any questions that you might have, let you know what your, you know, what the job opportunities are, see if it's worth your time um, and, um, you know, kind of just uh, dip your toe into the locums market. I think uh, another um, thing that I really like to do is um, connect physicians with other physicians that have worked locums. So you can you know, speak with someone, even if it isn't the same specialty, um, someone that's done locums, either at the facility you're interested in working at or just in general. So you can get their take physician to physician. So that's something I always um, try to do with the um, doctors that I work with and I recommend. And then lastly, just try it, you know, give it a try. That would be my advice is, you know, even if it's something short, you know, try, if you're not sure you want to make that leap, um, you know, try a weekend or a week and, and kind of see like, is, is this something that would help bring me some work-life balance? Would it make me happy and fulfill my career goals or networking goals, financial goals, whatever they, they might be? Um, so that, that would be my last advice is just give it a shot. <laughs> That's great. I want to thank you for uh, joining me on this, uh, Thanks. webcast. This is really Thanks for great. Having me. And, uh, it was a lot of fun. Thanks. Yes. Very much. Thanks for having me. Yes. Take care. <laughs>